Good evening. It's um, March 29th by 22. 22 p.m. Let's call the meeting of the Board of Staff Appeals to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I suppose if you can I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, independent with liberty and justice for all. I suppose it could be Peter, but definitely to be one of the three of you. So you. Are. What are we doing? We're making a motion to rescind, rescind the decision on appeal number and reopen seven. Is 325,000. So I think we have to rescind the uh, get the last decision. Let's start over. So, does anyone want to make a motion to? Oh, it has to be somebody on the. I don't remember what the vote was on, on the commercial appeal. Let's start with the commercial appeal. Appeal number seven, I believe it is. Um, uh, and it's six months or so wrote. Okay, I suppose it could be good. Thank you. Yep. I suppose it could be Peter, but definitely could be one of the three of you. So you have. What are we doing? We're making a motion to rescind, rescind the decision. On appeal number seven. Okay. Something is 325,000. Oh, commercial ones. We did those. Oh, we did those the first. We did, yeah, but we. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're just pulling up. Do you know what the vote was? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was 23 to 1. So I made a motion. I think the draft minutes are wrong. I made a motion to approve it in part to a certain value in the four. So I think it was 435 or something. Mm -hmm. And then I voted yes. And then Peter abstained, and the other three of you voted oh, no. Okay. Right. So, um, I mean, it has to be someone. I, I suppose it could be Peter, but definitely could be one of the three of you. So, you. What are we doing? We're making a motion to rescind, rescind the, the decision on appeal and number and reopen seven. Okay. Strong is 325,000. So, I believe this gentleman brought a, a large appraisal with him. I think we've all seen it. And there was uh, that if he is renting, call it. We want to redo this appeal. So you made a motion to add it to the agenda. I'm going to add it to the agenda. Yeah. yeah. It's as if supposedly it's like it's as if it never happened. We okay. So, all right. So it never happened. So we don't have to worry about that. So now we'd like to discuss appeal number seven, six, Thompson Hill Road, Fairfield. Via Forms of LLC is the name of the company. Town has the value at 400 and I'm sorry, 545,300. The ask amount is 325,000. So, I believe this gentleman brought a, a large appraisal with him, which we, I think we've all seen it. And there was uh, that if he is renting it out, because the rent is not. A guarantee. He has it now, but he may not have. So the value of it is okay, well, if he's renting it, but what, what if they don't pay the rent? What if they don't re rent? What if he can't get a tenant? And he averaged them out and came out with 325. I think one was 300. The income approach, I think, was 300, and the sales approach was 350. And then he averaged it into 325, is the way I read it. And so I, um, I spoke to the appraiser because I didn't understand why this was after. So it's appraiser because I didn't understand why he did it both ways and just took an average. Like why did why not use the income approach if it's an investment property? Or you know, why use the sales and with the way he explained it was that in properties like this, he does them both ways because when they are owner occupied, so the owner is running his business for that, that property, it is more valuable than if he is renting it out because the rent is not a guarantee. He has it now, but he may not have. So the value of it is, okay, well, if he's renting it, but what if, what if they don't pay the rent? What if they don't re-rent? What if he can't get a tenant? As opposed to, I'm in there, I'm renting, I'm not renting the property, I'm using it, I'm generating a large income out of it, so it becomes more valuable of a property. Because we have a steady generated income, and I'm not leaving. 
So that's that's basically why he did it that way. Why he did it? Why he does it? Why well. he does the two approaches? Okay. Yeah. And then averages them. And then averages them. And he used and the reason he got a number that is far different from the town is the difference between the two was only about twenty five thousand dollars. Yet the town has him the same thing about it. Just got one hundred forty five thousand. He's looking for three hundred twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. But he does have comps for those properties. So that's just I'm just doing an overview of the property. Anybody have any questions or anybody want to say anything about it or discuss it? So, so I have a question first. So, um, sure. What was the reason, since I didn't have to make the motion, what's the reason for bringing the appeal back before us again? Because we denied it. Um, right. But we, do we have new information or like. Well, the new information, the new information is that originally we thought that something was missing from that appraisal. The billboard. Right. Uh, but we found I out later after we had decided. That they weren't missing. Right. So that's why we're reopening. Okay. So that's so that's for the record. So that's, that's the reason. Yep. That's the reason why. Yep. Yeah. Misunderstanding. Sometimes or not. And I have to say, I think you brought up a really good point last time, Kathleen, in that um, you know, we've we committed to doing commercial property part, which is true. And and we should have the knowledge to be able to do that. So I started thinking about this. I talked about this property with a couple of mortgage brokers and a couple of um appraisers just to get their take part um and they both came in you know three what was it 300 and 300 and 350 with an average of 350 you know i i i'm glad we're reopening this i think we should have you know i think um properties but in general as a, as a but it's interesting that in the past we have always just looked at it from the sales approach we, i mean we never did in you know this is about my seventh year we we never in the beginning, when I first started doing this, we never did it that way. We never looked at it from a approach. So that is something that we really need to dive into for, for next year to really get a firm understanding of how, how we do that. But I do think in this case, you know, with the with the two being only, you know, twenty five thousand dollars apart, um, and they both came in, you know, three, what was it, three hundred and three hundred and three fifty with an average of three twenty five. You know, I, I I'm glad we're reopening this. I think we should have. You know, I think um, with the properties, but in general, as a as a town with assessments and as a board of assessment appeals, I believe we need to look at the highest and best use of the property and what the property typically sells at. So if it sells typically do tax appeals when they come to the appeal. Um, and the gentleman who did it is George Shawler from Baldwin Pearson, and he has agreed if we want him to. To come and speak to us in Feb in January about these appraisals. Coming from a commercial, yeah, because he's they're person. well known. It's a good, good idea. They've been doing this a long time. They're really a company that they pretty much specialize in this kind of thing. I don't think they do mm -hmm. much residential. So I just want to I just want to make two points. One, um, I agree that that's how appraisers work and they look at properties, but in general, as a as a town with assessments and as a board of assessment appeals. I believe we need to look at the highest and best use of the property and what the property typically sells at. So if it sells typically do tax appeals when they come to the appeal, they go to court or whatever you do, you need to back the taxes out of your expenses and then you load them back in at the end because say this building was about the town had this building value to add to those appeals. So I do believe in it because this is the commercial property. It's been sold as that, it's been used as that, but that's the most appropriate way to be the highest and best used would be whatever the higher number of the two is. So if the sales approach generates a higher number, um, then we use that number from his appraisal. And if the income approach generates a higher number, then we use the income approach because, you know, plus that's how it's being used. Um, do tax appeal. The second point is, is that this appraisal was not done as a tax appeal. It was done for family transfer or sale within, you know, it, it's not a tax appeal. And so when appraisers do tax appeals, when they come to, the, you know, they go to court or whatever you do, you need to back the taxes out of your expenses and then you load them back in at the end because say this building was about, the town had this building valued at a million dollars, right? His taxes would be. I don't know, his taxes would be 50, you know, whatever his taxes would be, 25,000, I don't know what they would be a year. 
So his taxes might be $25,000 a year. So he can't include those in his expenses because it's not a part of the process. The taxes is going to come later based on what the decision is as to the value of the property. So if we value the property at 500,000, then his taxes are going to be, you know, whatever he's paying now. That's because he yeah. value the property at a million, his taxes are going to be 24. So if you look at the other appraisal that this appraiser did, he, that he did for Ganim, you will see that he loads the taxes in later. And that's because Ganim's appeal was, a, was for tax appeal purposes. And so in this instance, this appraisal does not, it, it wasn't done for tax purposes. So the taxes are included in the expenses early on in the calculations. And so the spreadsheet I handed you out, and I have a, I have a revised one, now that we have better numbers on the billboard, all it does is take the exact numbers that he gave us. I didn't mess with anything. I took out, you know, I took the taxes out and then back in afterwards because that's the appropriate way to do a tax appeal. And then I did, and I also, I shouldn't say that, I separated the billboard out because you can't consider a billboard the same way you consider it rounded to strategies. It doesn't have utilities. It doesn't have, you know, rugs. You don't have to maintain it. You know, you have to heat it. So the billboards are, are appraised differently. So I took his value for the billboard at 268. It rounded to something. But the billboards last time around when I gave you the calculations and I came in around 450 or whatever, that's because the town had the billboards valued at $100,000. And we didn't, it doesn't serve the cap rate and any tax basically, you know, I, I didn't mess with this numbers. I didn't do anything different other than I back the taxes out and put them, you know, back in based on what our current mill rate is. And then, and that's what the tax load is. You load in the mill rate taxes after. And I came up with a number of, you know, I can pass it around, but 360,802. And the billboards came down because the town had the billboards at a salary. 360802? Is that one thing? Yeah. It rounded to something. But the billboards last time around when I gave you the calculations and I came in around 450 or whatever, that's because the town had the billboards valued at $100,000. And we didn't know, I didn't know what the amount was. We thought they left them out. So right. I took, you know, the rent is now less because I took the billboards out of the rent at the top and I mm -hmm. added the rent, but and I did the billboard separate at the bottom. So now the billboards are valued at about 37,000 and 230 is what the math shows as opposed to 100,000. So that's going to take some value right off the billboards, right? Because instead of being valued at 100, yeah. you yeah. confirm today, he gets the, you know, whatever, $3,000 a year in rent. He doesn't get the 10,000, which was or 8,000, which is what we assumed before. So, you know, if you take Shawa's math from his anim appeal, this is how he does it. He does all the expenses without the taxes in it. Then he loads it. He does it a certain cap rate, and then he tax loads at 1.8 or 1.9% and comes up with a value for the bill. So that's all I did on this one, and I came up at 360.802 by loading the taxes back in. So when you mentioned the Gannon one that was done for tax purposes, was that the same company? Yeah, same guy, same pages, mm -hmm. same numbers. Interesting that that guy didn't mm -hmm. make this comment that she's pointing out. Mm -hmm. Well, because he, the appraisal wasn't done for tax appeal. No, I know, but it if we'd like asked him to do that, he probably would have just taken it home and redone the yeah. approach. You know, because for that purpose, the taxes were twelve thousand, and he doesn't know. I mean, I can see why he would do that because. For at least for the sale. Oh, you mean that the tenant handed this in not knowing? Is that what you're the saying? The tenant could have handed it in or else the appraiser, when he did it, the taxes were 12000 So yeah. for the purposes of figuring out, you know, the value for the family transfer or whatever they were trying to do, mm -hmm. it made sense to include the taxes because for that, uh, right. that's what they are. Who but presented for, this, though, the appraiser or the... The person, the two people, the people. The woman and an okay. I wasn't okay. Clear, but I that makes sense. sense to me two now. People right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm happy to. I okay. mean, extra copies if you want. Okay. Let's not hand that out right now. Okay. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. So that's what I did using all of the numbers the appraiser gave us, okay. and which is what, I mean, when we had however many commercials we did, you know, two years ago. That's typically we just had Ross do the numbers or Paula do the numbers. We're like, could you get the taxes out and put them back in the way they're supposed to work? 
and give us the number based on the appraisal we received. And so that was what, you know, that was the process we used to somebody else did those numbers for us when we were doing all those contracts. So, yeah. so what do you, I mean, if you know, and then whatever, so that would be what I would recommend. Okay. You know, 360 and obviously 70,000 is going to come off the billboards or 72,000, you know, that we would recommend that you reduce the value of the billboards, you know, and then if the guy gets next time, you know, they get the income and expense reports in the office so they can actually see what people are getting, but that's not public information. So, but if he's willing to tell us what he gets, which he is, then it becomes, you know, that becomes public and we can use it in our calculations. And it's also matches what is in the appraisal. Piece. And Ross, did Ross help you with that? Help me with the tax load? Help you with the paper that you did? Uh, no, I just copied the appraisal. Okay. I mean, I asked what percentages you typically use for billboards. That was the only question I asked. And he said, we don't, you know, normally, if you don't know what somebody's value is, you use like 15% for, you know, expenses and you use a vacancy rate of 7 or 8%. So they just for make billboards, it up. we don't use, we don't use that high of an expense because the billboards just don't cost that much to keep them up. So we use 5% when they do their valuation, we use 5%. For expenses on the billboards that could be painting, washing. So, you know, but, but and then the vacancy rates, you know, you, it's, it's rented, you know, and it's consistently rented. Lamar has a contract mm -hmm. on it. You know, I mean, we could play with the vacancy rate. I take two. See, I don't, that's the part. That's where I have a problem. I have a problem with, well, we just, let's just, we could just play with this and we could just do that. Those aren't real numbers. Those are numbers that we make up. And not just we, those are numbers that the accessory that makes up. What I have in front of me, this man is attesting to the fact that as a result of his market research, um, his opinion is that this is the value of 325,000. The report has been prepared in accordance with regulations by appraisal reports as set forth under the uniform standard of professional appraisal practices as adopted by the appraisal institute, blah, 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 blah. So okay, this guy is giving us numbers that he says are derived by using these methods with these conditions. We're saying, well, you know, we'll think of 5% for this and 10% for this. And we're not appraisers. We don't have to practice to any standard. We're doing the best we can, but there's no standard. So what numbers am I going to believe? Okay, so the so, ones that are in front of me are the ones that we kind of said, well, it could be this. I, I disagree that I'm making that he's making up the numbers. I think part of you know what the VA handbook says is that there is a system in place in this town and it's in, and that the assessor designs that system that he uses to assess all the properties in town so that everybody pays, hopefully, their fair share. Well, that never happens. So, right, and we're here to figure out if people are not pay, are paying too much, then they're going to then they're going to come down or potentially if they need to go up, we're going to take them up. But our job is not to, our job is to try to work within the system the assessor has set up to make to to help anybody who's been aggrieved by the process, but not to break a system or to just, you know, say that we're making it up. So if you say, Ross, when you value billboards in town for everybody who has a billboard, what formulas do you use if they're not showing you the income on their billboard? And that's what he said. And he used this percentage for billboards. He used a 5% of for expenses, the vacancy rate of zero, whatever. And so then, but, I just but where do those numbers come from? Like, why doesn't he use a 10%? If, if, if you want to go back to the, if you want to go back to the appraiser and ask him to break the billboard out, because he may appraise bill, billboards differently, mm -hmm. but he didn't need to do that because this wasn't a tax appeal. This was a, this was a sale. That's why he was doing the appraisal. He wasn't doing it for tax purposes. If when did it sell? For tax purposes, he might have, when did it sell? It transferred within. Well, when did it transfer? Zero dollars. And when, that's why they got this appraisal. Okay. So they had some when value. Did it I think she said it in the, in the hearing. It was a family, you know, and they got it and they fixed it up and they. It looks like this was, yeah. well, I'm looking at like when, I'm, I'm looking at the field card. And yes. looking to see when the transactions he were. estimated the fair market value as of July 3rd, 2020, but he actually did it in June 6th of 2022. It says on June 6th, 2022, the appraiser made an interior inspection of the improvements to the site, the surrounding area, and the street scenes for the purpose of estimating the fair market value as of July 3rd, 2020. Okay. So he wrote. 
and things and that. So and what where does it say in the handbook that it's our job to find a fair market value? It says it somewhere. I don't remember what section. It also says it in the state reg. We're supposed to be looking for fair market value, which in, which is defined as the price somebody will pay under certain conditions. Yada yada yada. You know. And highest and best use. As exactly. Right. And and. But it's fair market value is what we're determining. And I'm not arguing about the highest and best use because the highest and best use of this property is certainly as a business. You know, nobody's going to live there. But. Um, so that's why we value it that way, because that's probably it's probably going to sell based on the income it's going to generate. In, in right, that's correct. And that's what but that's what the appraiser is saying. It's based on the income it will generate. If I'm in there myself and I'm running a multi-million dollar business, wow, that's a really valuable property. Look at the business, look at the income it's generating. But if I'm renting it out to somebody who's uh, putting soles on shoes, it isn't as valuable. It doesn't look, maybe it is, if the next person comes in and does what I did. But it doesn't appear as valuable on paper. Because they're not, and that's what he's saying. And his, that's exactly, your point is exactly what his was on the phone. That we look at both approaches because, depending on who's using it. And that's where you get your value from. Now, his value was within $25,000 each way. And he comes out with 350,000, 300 and 350. And then he comes out with 325 as an average. I don't see anything wrong with that. Was the 350 the sales approach or was that the cost approach? Probably that was the cost approach, but I'm not, I don't want to say that until I look again. Okay. Because if, if, the, if his cost approach was 300 and we, you know, we, we I don't think it was back the taxes out, it goes to 360. If he's saying the sales was three, 300. I don't know that it's a 65 page document. So I'll go from that. It's on one of the pages where both shows you. I mean, there's no question they need a reduction, and I'm very happy that we're moving. So he came back to three of the market value. He's saying net so, he, value. so he took the net operating income over the capitalization rate. So the 303 he says, call it 300,000. And so he came up with the 300,000 using the income approach. Came up with the 350. I'm assuming he said he get both. Yeah. That the in, that it was the sales, sales approach, approach that gave him. Yeah. That's why I said I didn't want to say right. Like so I took his income approach and back the taxes out. Did the billboard separately, and that that comes to 360. So, doing the math, you know that you can have someone else do the board. I don't. Is there any thought to just using the 350? Yeah, and we have some 25. And he, yeah. Well, yeah, no, sales approach, he has 350. He has a, but his, his conclusion is an average of 350. Using the 300 number, though. Yeah, so? The 360 number. He did have back to back. There's though. discussion about this whole taxes thing. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I don't have any knowledge. I'm only using hearsay from what Kathy's saying. And I guess that's part of my problem is like, I have a hard time not believing somebody who does a report like this and letting us do numbers on our own. One thing we do them on our own because we're trying to help somebody that doesn't come with documents from somebody else who's in the house. That's asked, what I'm having trouble with. You spoke to him. Yeah. And it seems to me it's the same company, first of all. It's just odd that he didn't say, well, when I'm doing a tax appeal, I take these taxes out like I like he did do. I don't know. I'm just kind of. I don't know. I don't know why he didn't take. He that. does it on his other tax appeals. This just wasn't a tax appeal. That's oh, what God. Right. Like, right. It seems like he should have said that. I don't know. It, it, you know, I don't even know that he submit. Did he submit this to the family? Like this. I don't one, know. Yeah, he didn't come to us. They brought it to. They us. brought it to us. Right. Yeah. So they probably just did it for them for their for their own personal okay. use. And they decided to bring it in here and use it for us. So I don't think they would have known enough that they needed to do it differently for a tax appeal, or they probably would have had him run the numbers for that for him and pull the taxes out. Anyway, so you I mean, three hundred fifty-five. I mean, like, let's do three hundred fifty and just. I'm fine with. I feel anything. more comfortable with that than three twenty-five. There's too much like. 
ambiguity yeah. amongst us. Yeah. Well, so yeah. I personally feel that. See, to me, the ambiguity is where nobody, not no, I shouldn't say it. The ambiguity is that the report that's in front of us is not believable, but somebody's worksheet is. That's what I have trouble with. But I, I'm not saying I wouldn't go for three. I'm just saying there's some that's evidence I'm that I'm listening to that that is swaying me to believe that it that this whole tax backing out thing is a possibility. Shh, do you want to wait and do it again? No, 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 oh, no, 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 we don't want to do that. No. no, I agree. There, there's a discrepancy between how we did one and how we did another. But if we can all agree on the 350, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay I, with you that. Know, Okay, and off of what? Let's do it then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're granting in part then. Yes. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion? I'll make well, a motion. I'll I'll down is you. <laughs> no. This time I will <laughs> note it. Uh, I'll make a motion that we grant this appeal in part to uh, three hundred fifty thousand. Favor. All in favor. One, two, three, four. Four in favor. All opposed. I'll abstain. Thank you. Abstain. Now, um, with regard to the worksheet that you have, according to the FOI, Russell Blair was the, I don't know what they call themselves, agent. I don't know what they call themselves, but the gentleman at the at Connect Drop Web that I spoke to. The worksheet does not belong in the folder. Don't put it in. We will leave it out. It's fine. It's an exception for the FOI rule. Doesn't make any sense, but none of that. Why makes any sense to me? I'm just forced to do it. And that's pretty new information. About. New information. Okay. Okay. Next appeal. Appeal number forty-five. Two eighteen Monaco Road. The appellate is Lori. It was Lori. Lori was the one who came. So Lori Mattioli. Matty Mattioli. Um. Now. So we're going to, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that we rescind our previous decision. All in favor. Yes, I would ask why or why. Because I feel like. Yeah. You feel like? <laughs> it's because, um, all right. Well, the reason I didn't say why is because I thought we had to do that, but I'll do it this way. So I'll tell you why. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess I, yeah, you want to know why. I get it. I'm with you. So, okay. So this is why. We received, I don't know if everybody got it, but I was sent an email from the appellate. Saying it was, I think it was addressed to the assessor. I'm not, I don't remember who was, who it went to first, but somehow I got it. And it said that she felt that we had made an error in our decision that we didn't take into account all of the information that she had given us about her property. Um, and that she felt like we were wrong to deny. I don't remember if we even denied it or if we granted in part. And we might have granted in part. I don't know. But she that our decision was incorrect. I have denied five zero zero. Okay, so that we made yeah, a mistake. Okay, no, we didn't okay. really consider all of the information that she supplied. She did supply a lot of information. So I went back to the to the file and looked at looked through it again. There were there was there were more than one there was more than one issue that I thought was on the property that we kind of neglected, and it could have been you know the way she brought her appeal to us and you know. I understand people's thinking that it's not our job to figure it out for them. I don't agree with that, but and the reason I don't is because I think that our use of the, this this kind of thing is far better than their understanding of it. They know something's wrong, but they may not know how to describe it. And I think in her case, she made some of her points, but the others that she missed and then we missed when we were looking at it. Um, so I'm thinking that at least her land, there's something wrong with the land, and that we need to at least look at the um a field card correction or whatever you want to call it to drop the value of the land based on the topography. That's number one. Number two was that when I looked at the pictures, the inside of the house is original. Okay, but hold on. Based on the topography that you saw. No, the fact, well, she showed it to us. It's in the file. She's got a topographical drawings in here, map. Okay. And she took some pictures. Now, her pictures, I have to say, the pictures of the property itself, they were not good. The angle, you really don't see. How steep that property is with the pictures that she Okay. Had. Did you take other I took pictures? other pictures. Yep. And so I went went out went out to the park. Yeah, I'll show that in a minute. I was okay. what I was the only thing I was gonna finish was that so okay. what the property was wanted. Okay. okay. Second issue was the condition of the house on the inside. When I looked at the picture she gave us of the inside, it's all original. Original, and I mean really original and not in good shape. Original bathrooms, the kitchen, the cabinets are so beat up, you can see that the varnish is off of all. She has a new countertop, but other than that, everything is old. Um, she's got, now we don't know what they are, so I can't make a statement that says that they're asbestos tiles, but she's got those tile, those asbestos looking tiles in her second floor. It's all from the forties and fifties. 
linoleum. And, well, it's, not, it's those tiles, those linoleum tiles that sometimes have asbestos yeah. backing or the blue is asbestos. I can't say that hers is because I didn't test yeah. it and she didn't test it. But um, her, the, the, the value they gave her for, her for the building was over $109,000. Now I've seen others on the street and others and other, when you look at the field guards, houses that look like that are usually way below that level. And it's not a big house. It's not because of the size. It's 12 or 1400 square feet, might be 1400. So I thought that maybe we should take another look at mostly the land. That was my concern for us, was the land. So I asked Paula to go and look at the house itself, the inside of the house, because I really thought it needed, somebody should really take another look at it. So Paula did, and she did make an adjustment for the building, for the structure. For the condition. For the condition. I don't believe that it was a fair enough number, but you know, well, how I feel about that, I don't know. We can discuss it if we want to, we don't have to. Well, we can approve the card correction. We can approve the card correction. Right. It's or we can say day. no, it's not enough. But um, because she put it down to like 102. Now, seriously, look at those pictures and tell me that that house is worth $102,000. 106, 300 from 112,900. Oh, yeah, she came down about, six, down about six, six, that's 6, 000. 000. Yeah. Yeah. six. So I don't think that was all that great, but you know, that's just me. But the, the photos of her, her, her topography, she didn't. It because I remember looking at those. Yes, the inside is, sure was is bad, bad, but I don't remember. They're not her pictures are not that no, good. Like she really tell. didn't capture what. But the thing is, if we looked at the map, uh, she did a topographical map, didn't she? Yeah, she did. that she you should. I have to be honest with you, I'm not great at reading those, but so I went to see the property. But I can tell you that at least if you could read it, if you know how to read it and understand it properly, you would know that it's really steep and that it's not usable. So Okay, you're right. So half an acre. But half an acre. And, and and so the house sits back. The house sits the... back. The house, I would say now, yeah, I can't so measure that's... it, but because we don't really know where the property line is. But yeah. to me, it's not, it's in line with the other houses on the street, I think. Maybe, you know, but mostly it's, I'd call that in line. And the zoning there, um, I think is 40 feet from the property, from the street line. Okay. So it's probably, it probably is compliant with that. Right, so her front yard is front usable, yard is usable. What the backyard, backyard is, is very unusable. unusable. It's mostly wooded. Mo oh, for what? Part of Lake, Lake Hills? Like, are they part of the Lake Hills Association? Uh, no. no not, I don't think, not, I don't think, not, not, oh, I don't I think they, they want, were. Well, they have their own, well, yes, I guess they are, because they can use that lake. Yeah. yeah I think, yeah, I always think of the other side. Like yeah. Five lakes or six lakes. Yeah, I always think of the other side. But it, this is, yeah, at least half of it is wooded. Yeah, it's wooded and really steep. So I think that having her land valued at so one more. at hundred percent, I believe it is. Yep. Site index five, condition one. So there's no adjustment on here for that one. Well, what did Paula think about the land? She didn't mention it. She sent me an email huh. saying that she um, adjusted the field card, she sent me a copy of the field card, which she didn't discuss what she thought about the inside of the house, but that this was what she did. And I didn't question it. I was actually thinking about asking her today when I was I was in town hall today doing some other stuff. I was thinking of asking her, but we were interrupted by um, Ross, who came in to listen to what we were discussing. So I stopped the conversation. By the way, did we bring the did we motion? Did we vote to bring this back to the table yet? Or this was just the reason that we're bringing it back. Well, I was going to, but Peter wanted the reason. So those are the reasons those why I wanted ones. to bring it back. Okay. 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 So, sure. yeah, that's where we are. So those are well, those. That's the whole. To that's, rescind, the, to rescind that's all the of the reasons to, to remind my my to rescind. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now, <laughs> I'd like to make Can a motion. You start all over again. Yeah. Let's what do you want to know? Yeah. Start again. So I want to. I'd like to make a motion to rescind our original decision, um, on this on, on appeal number whatever I said it was. Forty five. Forty five. Two eighteen. Not opposed. Vote. All in favor. I'm fine with that. Okay. All I'm right. So we've discussed most of it. Um, so one of the things I did, and I have pictures of it. One of the things I did when I was there, because you know I know how people are here, we have to prove it. So I had them measure how much land they have to use behind the house. And they do have a deck off the back of the house, which gives them some use, but actual yard space is six feet. It's 12 feet from the edge of the deck to where it's cleared. But not all of it is level. It's six feet of level property between the edge of the deck, the end of the deck away from the house, to the to the farthest point of level property on the on the is six feet. 
That's all they have. Really? Now I don't I can't I can't verify this because I wouldn't have a way to, but she said that she asked a couple of builders about buying the property, and I think she mentioned something like that in her appeal, at least one of them. And they said no. The one she told me about when I was there was um De Laurentiis, Duncan De Laurentiis' husband. Mm -hmm. And he said no because he wouldn't be able to, wouldn't be worth it for him because he wouldn't be able to put the house the way he wanted it and then have enough yard space to make it um appealing to the public buying it. So what I did was I took the time to, on paper, draw out, okay, if she's, if the house is 40 feet from the property line, we have to start. And then those houses that he builds typically are 40 to 42 feet deep. So add that in. Plus you put a deck or a patio. She's, he's got about six feet of property left too. So I could see why he didn't want to do it. There's not extra property. And if the, the way the house is situated, the, when you face it, the right side, there's more wooded that comes closer to the house than on the other side. But moving the house a different way wouldn't really make that much of a difference as far as using the property. So I can show you the pictures. I actually drove by it. So I what did you think? I drove around. Yeah, what's your thing? I mean, I can see that she definitely has a lot of ledge in her backyard. I think everybody else on the street does as well that are on that side of the street. Hey, right? It definitely yeah. goes up on that side. Um, I also noticed that there's an awful lot of teardowns in there. So there are a lot of properties that have sold and then, you know, right. And then they, they've sold this teardowns or whatever. They've been fixed up. So there's some million two, million four. I mean, I definitely think that there's value in that. I don't know how, was it not a pub? Not a pub. Yeah. Not a pub, Winnipeg, Papara, all of those streets. Mm -hmm. um, so while I see her ledge, I, I still feel like. She needs to prove the market value of her property. And I think when she sent her email, what she was saying was that. I mean, look, first, I would just want to back up and say, look, if we're going to give her a car correction. I'm, you know, that was one of the reasons why to bring it back to the table was so that we could. Give her a car correction for whatever value she's on the value of her house that Paula did. But in terms of her proving her point with her sales, which is what data I kind of need to say. Your house isn't going to sell for that value. I, I didn't think that the comps that she provided, she provided 1 across the street that sold that I believe was a very low sale right across the street from her, but the house next door to her also sold. And there was another 1 on pepper and she didn't use the other comps in her neighborhood to prove her point. She used comps from other neighborhoods or other parts of town. And so well, that's I, why we threw it out. Well, right. yes, but I, remember. And she, well, why, yeah, go ahead, I'm why, sorry. Go ahead. why did she choose all of those comps when she could have just said my neighbor's house sold in the rebound period for this amount of money and, and their house is right next door and that house is, you know, nicer than mine. So mine's never going to sell for this much or adjusting that one or finding the other cape up on Pavara that sold in the rebound period in the fives, you know, but she didn't. So I don't know. And she, she listed like 15 properties and they were all in these other neighborhoods. So yes, but like, they're not really in another neighborhood, some of them, because after all, the assessor okay. put them all in that neighborhood. So what we would consider that yeah. Lake Hills area. If I go by the assessor's map and all of that. Yeah, so, but if I go by the assessor's map, they're in her neighborhood. Yeah. Wasn't that the whole point? Um, no, because, well, for driving the market value, which is what I'm trying to figure out, is I would expect to see her listing properties that are in her not in her neighborhood code, but in her neighborhood, like in where she lives. Like mm -hmm. that's if the neighborhood code is is a code used by the assessor to group land values. And you know, I, I think the land values in 85 are high for this neighborhood. And if these had been in the Lake Hills, her land value would be lower. It'd be at 1.1 as opposed to whatever it is, the 1.25 or something. 85 has a higher land value than Lake Hills does. And so Maybe this neighbor definitely over, but she, yeah, she's got the house across the street or in the floodway. Like why that house that? across the street that's old, and it's FEMA, you know, needs FEMA insurance. Mm -hmm. If you look at the floodplain, the water that's goes right through the house. And the other ones that sold a low sale that when you come right into Nanafog at the beginning on the right, those guys are down the same thing. They have the river in their backyard, they're wet. They, you know, she is in a dry portion of the street. She doesn't need flood insurance and she does have a bad backyard, but there's a lot of value in that area. And I think, I don't know for me, I don't think she proved her point with her sales. 
And that's what I needed to hear her show. And I pulled a bunch of sales that she didn't use, mm -hmm. you know, to sort of get a, an idea of okay. what, well, what's the sales you pulled, the ones you pulled, are they all uphill? They have Do they all have that all kind of yard? Kind. Do they all have that yard? Did she pick in all of the other comps? Did she pick people with I don't know. DPR? I'm just asking, well, you want your pulled comps? I'm asking you. I didn't drive by all of them, so I don't know. Right. No. I have to okay. and see. They don't have land adjustments on them, the one that she could pick across the street. You know, I think that one was was one that probably was half renovated, went on the market in 2020 and sold in April of 2020. And I, I remember it coming up before and, you know, some of the brokers looked it up and said, oh, yeah, that one was a real problem because they started the work and then it didn't. He couldn't finish. They probably hit the 50 50 rule on the house and then it, and then somebody bought it, fixed it up and. You know, and now it's valued over a million dollars straight across the street, but they don't have the ledge. So I'm not arguing that she doesn't have ledge. What I'm saying is no one else on that street has an adjustment for land on it. And there's there is value in the neighborhood that I think brings her higher than what her ask price is. And so is it our job to figure that out for her because she has ledge? Otherwise, we're going to have to give everybody. Lit. Why would we have to give it everybody? Not everybody came to it. Well, I well, let me ask you this. I just want a system that's no. I want that. I want a system that's fair. Say, but yeah. but Kathleen, if we did it that way with everybody, we would never we would never grant an appeal because we'd be afraid that if we grant an appeal to Helene, then Carol's going to come in and say, "Well, I have the exact same piece of property. I deserve the same thing." And well, we're we going to give it to everybody on the street. You can't look at it that way. Every piece is individual. No, no property is exactly the same. Right. By the way, let me ask you this. Do you think that a piece of property that looks like hers, you saw how it goes up, right? You agree that it goes way up. Never I mind saw the that, but it's definitely steep okay. in the back. I saw some, someone actually, he, maybe her husband, someone was in the yard and they were up there doing things it's with probably, the bushes in the yard. Probably cutting. Yeah. Oh, good. You can cut them. You're going to send your kids up there to play? Well, if you don't like them, I guess you would. Well, I'm <laughs> arguing that it's all okay. rocks. So it's all rocks and legs. So would you think, well, here's my point. Would you think that that piece of property does not deserve, say, uh, I don't know, a 0.10 or a 0.15 reduction, that doesn't deserve it, but a piece of property that's flat, rectangular, in a good neighborhood that's level deserves it. Because of the shape of the lot, not because of anything that's on it. Yeah. What'd so, you say? So my point is the assessor's cards, you, when you look at a card, you start with the market value. Okay. You don't necessarily go and put site adjustments on every property that has something wrong with it. That's not why the assessor has a card. If you want to have, you know, well, uh, why if you're an pay, assessor? excuse me, if you want to have surveys and things, then you go to zoning, you go to conservation, you go to other places to figure out, right? What, what is the, what's going on in this piece of land that has to do with the town? But the assessor's card exists to provide the that the, the market value for assessment purposes. It's not to not to keep a record of the geography of a particular property or even to keep track of how many, you know, how many uh, easements the property has. That's not the purpose of, an, of a, from my opinion, that's not the purpose of a property of those cards. Those cards are for valuation purposes. So unless a property has a reason, a physical something going on with its location where it can show that the market value of that property, it's not gonna sell because it has these problems with the land, then you start making adjustments to the site so that no matter what happens in the marketplace, that one's always gonna sell less than the one next to it. But that's, you only go do that if the market isn't, the, the, the price isn't right on that house in that neighborhood. And I just don't think she proved her point. That's what I'm saying. Her well, sales she has to make that point that with the builder. With, uh, the builder yeah, offered her Three something, which is what right. he says her house and property is worth. The yeah. town says it's worth four something. Yeah, she so yeah. so yeah. Fowler brought her down a little bit. I just don't think she should be at three. I just don't. I three twenty. I didn't say she should be at three twenty. But then, how do we decide what she should be at? Well, I don't know. How do we decide that a piece of property deserves a discount because it's not the proper shape when it's twice as much property that needs to be? What a flat piece of property. I because. Someone does the sales analysis and figures it out. Somebody figures that happens. out. And so because a beautiful piece of property has nothing wrong with it, gets a discount, then this one doesn't. And somebody on Burr Street gets that soaking wet property that their property is now worth $324,000 on three acres of land. 
because they get a discount, but somebody who somebody else doesn't. Uh, it's not right. It's not a discount. We're not. We're not. It's not a discount. God, I wish my property was only worth three hundred thousand dollars. That would be nice. It's not. I mean, it's just trying to. The cards trying to figure out how to get to the market value of that property. And you know what? That court's right for that piece and of you property. Coding and coding happens to me. Coding. Oh, what coding? What's the coding? Site that's his. Access. That's his system again. Yeah. Okay. All the adjustments, the land well, curves. There's all, all things what that happen happening? in the what? assessment system okay. to try to to try to get to market value. Well, let me ask yeah, you she, she is talking about her, her petition was that we did not pay attention to the comps that were that's submitted. What she said. Yep. That's what she's saying. Public. And so I go to the property. And so one, I see that one of them is not a public. Yep. That's the one that, that if you look it up in, in the MLS, you'll see that one was like under construction. And I think something happened, so it was half done and it sold. And that's the one that has the floodplain that goes right through the middle of the house. That one sold at a very low, sold like at three three thirty or something. Right, three thirty. Yeah, if you guys look but at that, that, I remember uh, that. Uh, Campbell, I'm just looking at all sixteen of these, so I want to first address that we did look at them, and we found that well over the majority, besides Nanapog and maybe Candlewood. I can't remember where Candlewood is. I wouldn't use Candlewood. The, okay. Unless, so unless, the majority of these unless are it has not the same code. in her neighborhood. Which I don't think they're it. just, they're not in Carol, I agree with you. Hills area. I agree with you to the so, extent that they're not physically in that neighborhood. But if we follow the assessor and his protege's way of looking at things, they are in the same neighborhood because he put them yeah, there. Yeah, but we're same neighborhood code. They're not in the same Forget neighborhood about code. So the assessor, go. because we have never used that when. We have not been talking neighborhood codes. I no, we have this part this of time. revising those codes with you, and I and I hope he does someday. But we haven't done that as a board. So forget. I, I personally want to forget about that for a moment. It's these sales comps were not of value. Okay. And I and I'm just sort of reiterating in my own head, I guess, why we felt we um, did you denied it. Did you? I think we denied it for that. 205 not a phone? Is that, is that? Girl, I think we Yeah, I'm just, just going to look that up. So 205. Is that the one yeah. she gave us? She gave us one on her list. No, she did not a phone on her list. She gave us that. She did. She no, she did. did. I'm looking Thank at the. I so that one, so that sold in 2020. Yes. 330,000. Yes. Right. Yeah. So tell me go. about that. But Do you have it on valued, MLS? Now it's valued for a lot more. It's valued over a million dollars. No, but I mean, that's what that. That property was worth, worth what that builder thought that right, was right. But worth. it was if you read the MLS or like I found the description, it was like half done, like renovation, you know, underway, great opportunity. What did it sell for before they? Yeah, but then they tore it down and they just they. It's a you know brand new. They moved up a lot. Yeah. yeah. So there was something. With so they property. tore it down. Oh, are you on MLS, Helene? Yeah. Okay. So. I mean, they basically, you know, it's they over 330. The, they they used the builder tore it down. Well, he, it said completely renovated and expanded from top to bottom. So, I mean, they, I, they might have used the, maybe they the, filled in the basement. basement. I don't know. Had to, have. had to make it feel like compliant. Yeah. So they probably yeah. filled in the basement. Okay. So now it's like, quote, slab. Yeah. It's okay. a partial with hatchway. So it's, um, they probably had to fill some of it in. And then well, I'm just saying, like, normally we don't make a decision based on one comp, but okay, out of the six, I'm just want to say that she needs to realize out of the 16 comps she's provided, um, but she also provided only with one that's within her radius of what we look at. But she, well, that's and actually, well, you're right, that's what we look at. But as a whole board, I will guarantee you that that is not what's being looked at. I've seen it happen over and over again. Oh, it's in the neighborhood. It's not in the neighborhood. You're absolutely right. Now, she also provided us with this. Okay. So she what? She provided us with her contour map. Right. So in her appeal, somewhere in her appeal, she's telling us that her property goes up. I don't know how many feet because I don't okay. read these maps that well. Okay. So she's showing us that there's something wrong with the contour of that one. Yeah. Okay. We didn't so, really address that. So right. That because we got good. caught up in the whole sales thing. Right. Right. Okay. That's, okay. So that's what I wanted to address this time. Okay. Do I agree with Paula? No, but I'm letting it go. I'm really more interested in this. 
because it was right in front of us, there were so many things to look at. Somehow, we didn't really discuss that part of it. So that's why I brought it back up. Now, what would you do, though, if you had been the person that went to the house? Trying to figure out what she was talking about and you walked onto the property and saw that. Would you really be able to ignore that and walk away and say too bad? Yeah, no, we can't, you, you can't ignore it. And that's all I'm saying. I mean, here's a sale that she didn't include. I can give you some numbers. You can take a look at them. I did not look at the contours of the lot, but these are similar cakes on similar size lots in the neighborhood. And they sold for different, different values. The pop 138 Popper Road sold for 370 in, in April of 2020. If we want to do her work for her, these are the ones she might have, you know, could have included. And that's a cake on, you know, 0. 0.48 acres. 1300 square feet depreciation code of three, which means it's probably not in very good shape. And it sold for, you know, in April of 2020 for 370. What and that's a real, I would consider that a cake that's a comp for her. Right? Another one would be, uh, now this one was sold a little after the rebound period. So maybe you don't want to use it, but 420 Romanox sold in, you know, in June of 2021 for 725 and it's on 0.47 acres and it's a 1300 square foot cape with a small garage. But I mean, but okay. are we looking at what the, the I, I get said, all those properties? I mean, that? are we looking at? No, I'm just, I'm saying the property. Next, so look at next door, right? So right next door, it's 230, 236 Nunapog. It's sold for in, two, in November of 2019 sure. for 350. And then it sold again. That was not a fuck LLC. So maybe a builder bought it. And then it sold in August of 2020 for 680. Now it is bigger. It's 2,200 square feet, but it's bigger. It's a lot bigger. It's like double size. Yeah, it's a bigger house. It's next door, and it sold for 680. So she's not supposed to be at 680, but she's a, she's not at 680. Well, it's half the size. So let's put her at half. Please and then stop. here's the really wet one that sold down in the water. You know, right when you come in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's what yeah, it has it adjusted for the stream. That's you can see the way. Yeah, it's similar to put. So, I mean, so we've got two. Yeah. We've got one at 236 and one at 205 that both are six feet of property. One at one yeah, sold at 330, one sold yeah. at 350. Well, I'm not opposed to doing a curve correction. Yeah. Um, it's a question of, but, you know, what value are you going to give yeah. her and how are you going to come up with that? Because she didn't give us good comps to, to give us a good market value. But she so, did also do, well, she did point out? out the topography part as well. Yeah, but now I will adjust for that. If you don't know. Well, we've made that. lots of adjustments. We've never adjusted. I mean, we, we have done like that, that for years. Well, well, so, okay. Only so. if we know the sale price of the adjustment. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I well, and that's that means that I mean, that we're all different. We're all going to have different opinions about you. And I agree it does create a problem because we don't have the sales comps. But does that mean this woman has to hold her finger down her throat waiting for somebody to sell their house to get it, get relief when she's agreed? It's not so her fault that they... What, what happened? Have you made some um, calculations based on um, adjustments? Yeah, I did different property? adjustments to try to see. Like, I think that's so the 20 you... that she's asking is too low. What? The 320 that she's asking personally, I wouldn't pay so what you would, but so that's what's point. the land value right now? Okay, so the land value right now is let's not forget to give her the correction for the house. That's separate though. Yeah. I think that's already on this. I think I pulled this one up. What it what is at 351. Land's at 351. Mm -hmm. He's got point so one five land. Like I said, none of them on that side of the street have an adjustment for their. And how much is? Thank you for pointing that out yet again. I don't care. Well, we, we so we can't like say all the neighbors. All the neighbors have 0.95, so that's what's the problem mm -hmm. here. But that's not true. All right. So I guess what I did was too. I spent some time on online looking at field cards. I just randomly picked field cards and said, okay, like when I found one that had a reduction. I looked at what the reduction was and why. Okay, well, you know, if they got like a 5% reduction for blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, is this worse than that? No. Okay, well, maybe it's okay. Yes, it's worse than that. Let's keep going. So I tried to come up with something that I thought would be fair 
based on the fact that the property is not very usable to anybody. And trampling those million dollar notes that you say are popping up all over the place. Do they have yards like that? Some of them are in her backyard. So if you go up top, up and they're top. on a cliff and they go down in the back. But right? how much would you can't, going up can you tell me how much of that is usable? Um, you don't know. There's no way to know. How would we know? There isn't. And so obviously it's what the builder can get on the lot and what he can do with the footprint that's there based on the ledge. Right. So. And that's that's complicated formula, and the builders must know what they can. Yeah. Do what did he tell her? He'd give her? I thought he said he'd give her like three fifty or three fifty five, something like that. It wasn't no more yeah. than that. With Alton and also the last two, this one across the street and two hundred five sold for three thirty and eight twenty, two thirty six sold for three fifty and eleven. All right, so look at okay, that was the whole thing. That wasn't just the last thing, right? That was the sale price. So the sale price would be three, three what? Three. Yeah, 330, right? 330 and 350, those two. Now I see where she kind of got. Now I see what kind of got that, right? So if you say 351. Well, if perfect. you reduce the land by 90, not sorry, by 10%, which is a 0.9. Then the value comes to 421,300. How much? 421,300. Just in your head. Yeah, just in your head. Yeah. A 10% reduction. Yep. Reducing that land. When I reduce the land, it comes to 315 with a 10% reduction. And then I added back in the new building value, which is 106? 300. So that comes to 421,300. That's still too much. Okay. So let's try another number. Too much. Too much. It's, it's too high. The pro it still makes the property. How makes the property? Yeah. Why? How does you do that? That's land. why I don't. Like, you're not going to yeah. get there with the land adjustment. You're going to have to go way, way down to take her down 150 thousand on her land. If that's how you, if that's the math you're using, you're going to have to put like a 0.6. You know, it's a percentage of the land. Mm -hmm. So in order to and get it to come down, one. we're this just going to have this to give. You're just going to have to give it a value and let Ross figure out where he's going to take it from no. to make the numbers work because you're not going to be able to make it work. I don't think you're going to I think we can like four or something like, no, if you, what if number you took, do you want to get? If you to? took three fifty, Yeah. I'm just curious why you say it's too high. Just what you're because that, because that value, that land, that property value, the whole piece pulling out shouldn't be in the four. That's well, we have point. reduced some land by 20%. I, I remember doing some mm -hmm. point eight. I don't remember why. Oh, maybe some of the ones like where it flooded in yep. the beach area. What's her face? Maybe, maybe, maybe we didn't get her help on the house. So I don't think, I don't think we did. I don't uh, think we did either. But you know, now we have to. I don't know what we have to do about that now. Yeah, but if it's going to be a tear down anyway. Yeah. Well, it, it, you know it's going to be. And it's it's. And we know it's not going to be any more than. We know it's certainly not going to be over four hundred. That's for sure. Well, that that's a normal lot. Think about the topography and wonder. Right. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. This will bring it right about four hundred. Two eighty eight hundred plus one two oh six three oh oh. She, she wants 325. We're not going to get to 325. No. We're not going to get to 342. I think she's got 325 to 342. We're not going to get there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she that's what she changed it to. Yeah, no, that we're not going to get there. We're not going to get that far. Yes. That's not going to happen. She, is she, she almost did. Okay. If we reduce it yeah. to 80 percent. Okay. The total value comes to 387,100. I What's the matter with I that? Live with that, absolutely, I could live with that. We have reduced other people's mm -hmm. values when they've. I remember doing an eighty percent um, a couple times. One was that Ukrainian guy who had. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I remember him. Yeah. All the problems with his property, and then I do remember. I think he did it for a lease. A real estate agent. Denise, 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 Denise,
she the had Alice. 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 Yes. yes. She yes. had a whole a lake lot lake. in exactly. her backyard. Not all the time, no. but when torrential downpours. Yeah. So yeah. in my head, I remember reducing yeah. some shitty guardland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But not below 80%. No, I wouldn't. No. So. And what was that number that you came up with? Three. May I want to double check the math? Yeah, so somebody else do it. 80% times the current land, which is at 357. So three, I'm oh, sorry, 351 times 0.8. Someone doing the math? Yeah, I'm more clear. I'm sorry. Oh, that's it. My cell phone gets long. So the land is at what? 351. 100. It's still point eight. Okay, that brings the land to 28800. Right. Okay. And then the new house value was from Paula. 106300. A total of Let's see whatever you said, right? <laughs> yeah, this is not my right. I have number. 387 100. Was it 288 80, right? So, yeah, 387 100, 180, or 200 if you wanted to say that. 387 mm -hmm. 288 100 and 106 300. 288 280 oh, 280. Okay. But I mean, you kind of have to round those up, right? You'd have to. I don't think we see anything less than hundreds in, in any of the, whether it's in yeah. the house or the land. Yeah. Thank you, so those two together come to like 387. Call it 387, 200. Do I want to make that motion since you did all the work? Well, it wasn't that much work. Yes, I make a motion to correct the land value to a reduction of um, 20 percent. The card correction first. Sure. I'll make two motions. The first motion is to correct the, the card based on Paula's assessed new value um, for the building to be 106,300. From, I don't know that. What was it from? 109 and something. No, maybe 112. 112. No, no, no. need to figure yeah. out what the new total is. Okay. 351, 100 plus 106, 300. Well, now that's the first motion. Can right. Someone, so that gets me to, I think that gets us to 457, 400. Oh. Whatever the new card says. Let me just look at that. 457, 400 is what the new card says. Okay. So let's vote on the card correction currently so that it comes into place right now for that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. oh, okay. All those in motion of that. All, so all those in favor of that. Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah. Unanimous. Next. Sorry, it's hard when I have to make So it. just before Carol makes your I just want to say, you know, no, no one's buying in that neighborhood for the for the backyard. Right. No one's buying it. You know, you, 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 I guarantee as realtors don't show homes in that, that neighborhood and say, oh, look at, you know, your, your backyard, right? You're selling the lake, the community there, that, yeah, you know. That's a piece of it. That's a piece of it. That's not. not they can give us the information. You only know one person. We had an appeal on 208 uh, Cedar, North Cedar Road. And after being accused of playing favoritism more than one time by more than one person, and being reported to the elections office inappropriately. I asked me, I was talking to Ross about the wetness of the property and how, how difficult it's going to be though. They, for them to put in a septic system, it's going to be a real nightmare. It's going to be a huge expense. He said, well, don't they have sewers? Uh, hello, you're evaluating properties and valuing them. You don't know who has sewers and who doesn't. Why not? How long have you working here? There's a lot, there's several other things he doesn't know about the town. It's like you work here. You're you have you're responsible. It's not a responsible position, and yet you can't tell me about property, and yet I'm supposed to believe your system. How can I believe in a system when you don't even know what you're doing with it? For example, here 
Are you happy that your property is worth the value of your property is higher than the ones in Greenfield Hill? Probably not. I wouldn't be, but it is. Well, that's the way he did it. Uh, you know, and it's actually Greenfield Hill is actually lower than the than the value he gave to Tunks's Hill. Hello. There's a lot of undervalued properties. There's a ton of them. I mean, with the property that fakes the lake on St. Mortar. It's not the best street, but it's got beautiful, they're on the lake. I mean, it's beautiful in the back. He's got those values the same as Nanapo Grove with the big hill in the back. How is that possible? So the, the, the systems that he uses, not just him, they all do it. The systems that they use are based on algorithms. I don't even know what, statistics, whatever. And somehow they work a few times in there and they come up with these ridiculous numbers. And then we're supposed to follow that because that's the town system, but it's not right. So how do you, in all good, in all good conscience, how do you tell somebody that they're wrong when you know they're not? Because these are wrong. And that's just, that's the where I'm coming from with it. That's why I cannot accept some of that. Some of it is okay. Some of it's not all wrong. Some, but, and some of it is okay, but the rest of it isn't. And I don't really know when that'll ever change because the next pre they'll come up with all different numbers and they'll change all those neighborhoods again to make his system work. But he's not making it work for people like us, making it work for him, in the town. He's employed by the town. He has a responsibility to them. He doesn't have a responsibility to the taxpayer. We have the responsibility to the taxpayer. All of them, Peter is right. We have responsibility to all of them. But for the ones who come here, we need to look at their case and judge it individually, as far as I'm concerned. And that's the way I look at it. So it's not that I'm being, I'm not that I'm favoring somebody that I know. I don't know this woman. I never met her before. She came before us. And I've never met the appraiser that did that appeal. Just the way it is. I'm not, I'm not going to give into a system that has too many flaws, has so many flaws. I'm surprised there aren't more appeals. Next on the agenda, do we have any minutes? We have to approve minutes. Okay, hurry up. I'd just, like to, to just like to say something about the value of my property that, you know, I'm, I'm you know, with, with all this global warming, I think I'm sitting on a board from property. So just, just. Okay, well, you know what? Maybe you'll be lucky, Peter. <laughs> then, it'll be worth, then it will be worth what you're being charged. <laughs> I'm not too happy, to be honest with you, I'm not too happy that my property, the way they value it, is valued higher than east of North Benson with some of the neighborhoods that are in there. Deer Park, Hannock Park. I don't think that's fair. No, not what if, we did. And why did we do it? We did it because the, the, the neighborhoods were too big. That neighborhood is enormous. Strath, the one that, that's 80 or 85, whatever it is, Strathfield, mm -hmm. he calls it Fairfield Woods. It goes from Fairfield Woods Road to a flight. What happened to our whole, we spent hours because we didn't have to, recommendations. Yeah, because we didn't have to use it. We're what? still working on it. We're still working on it. We were lucky this Can year. Can the town accept that? They don't have to accept it. I don't expect them to. Um, I expect to use it. I don't expect them to like it. I mean, that was a good map. That was a really good map. That was perfect. That was. But it still needs some work. When it's done, we'll bring it to Ross, see what he thinks. I mean, the neighborhood codes that are out there now, he inherited those from Don Ross. He did not create those other neighborhoods. They, they've been in existence for a long time. And what they've been doing with each one of the rebounds is my understanding is that they are trying to hone in better and and figure out more of when there's so many properties in one area and that's why you'll see the newer neighborhoods showing up in a rebound and hopefully in the next rebound they'll make some adjustments they'll move some more into lake hills so that these ones you know that these guys that are in Fairfield woods 85 their land values are probably a little too high because they're they're valued we can help in the rocky neighborhood yeah, yeah. And, you know yeah. and, then, and you can just look at a map and you know and then you also adjust within them so there there are tools because it's mass appraisal there are tools in the software but at the end of the day they have to make the sales match what they're doing and so they're looking for formulas when they plug the sales in right to have things on cards and land curves and things to come up with numbers so but he had so, he had years he's how long has he been here now five six years even a reval company but, does that work. But he, yeah. He's here. He's had five or six years to work on making those changes and he went right ahead and he inherited them and he kept them. Maybe he made a few little changes, not enough. It's gonna be another 10 years before he fixes it. I think there's a 2025 reval coming. There is a 2025, right? but is he gonna fix it then? I hope so. No, we hoped last time too. There's no way. It was, we could argue about it forever. It wasn't a full, right? It was just a, it was a mathematical reval. It was not a go in the house. And that's, and so, visit. right. And so there it is. It's a mathematical reval. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't fit into those equations. That's what makes me mad about it. If you're, when you're charging people money, you better have a good reason. 
his reasons are not good enough. So we're here for thank goodness. Thank goodness for us. Um, so I, I'm going to move into approving the minutes. Sure. One of the things uh, I'll first say is that there's a couple of like wordsmithing things that um, Rob's awesome. recommended on two of the appeals. It's not really to change the appeal at all. It was really just presenting it in what he felt was a more methodical way. So why did he feel that way? Yeah. You know, these were ones with the um, so like appeal number 24, they're both based on the first date that we got together, which is March 13th. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these are the, the personal property ones where they talk often in terms of assessed value. And we're used to talking in terms of appraised value for the residential properties. So, um, he had recommended like, uh, to change the wording on appeal number 24, I had said motion to approve vote was unanimous. And then there was a second. Oh, sorry, motion to waive the penalty. It was opposed uni uh, unanimously. Okay. The second vote was to accept the new value of 8,000 plus the 1600 penalty. And we approved that unanimously. What he's asking us to do is to say, um, for the second vote, approve the total assessed value of 6,400 plus the 1,600 penalty for a final assessment of 6,000. So he's really changing the words from new value to the assessed value. So I don't have a problem with that. He's just wordsmithing it differently. He needs to stay out of our business. Well. It's not I'm going to tell you, these these ones with per, the 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 personal values are we struggled with this because as we were saying the motions we were going back and forth between appraised value and assessed value and it's it's messed up with the personal property so I personally have a problem with it um, and appeal number thirty two which is the next one which also is a personal property. Um, again, I use the words approved the new, which could be misleading because it doesn't, I'm not using the words appraised or assessed. So I can appreciate that. And he said, change it to approve the total assessed value of 2420 plus the 48 and $6,800 penalty for a final assessed value of, um, 24 which is. In that one, I didn't add the two together. So, I don't know, you can look back on it yourself if, you, if anyone wants to learn. That the, part of that is a typo too on my end because I, I'm looking right now, bad, bad me. <laughs> I put $480 penalty and it's actually 400, it's a 4,800. I was okay. that's a clear one. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion to at least correct. I'm going to correct those two uh, appeal minutes. So can we? So can we back up? Can we do February 21st first and get that? No, let's do this one first because we'll be, we're in the middle of it. Then we go right back to okay. February. So then I'm just going to make a, a general statement about the minutes. Can we vote on this one first, please? No, All in favor? No, no, because we're not finished with discussion. Uh, the, the discussion is closed. We're Why is correcting, that correct? Because we're correcting his mistake. We're correcting a mistake. It's not like we're really making well, a decision. So, I mean, but, but I think there are other other errors that need to be corrected. Just in those, in those two appeals that she's talking about. Well, I mean, we're talking about the March thirteenth minutes. So okay, go ahead. What do you want, what do you want to tell us? Two changes. If you're just no, no, about the two not, changes, yeah. That, that's fine. That's what I'm saying. No, I think she's right. March 13th in general. Okay, then let's do March 13th. Then let's go back to February, whatever it was, Kathleen. Right. So the February 21st minutes, right? So I'll make a motion to approve the February 21st, 2023 minutes, right? These were the ones when Owen um, came to mm -hmm. visit. Oh, actually, I had, um, I did have two changes to that. 
also in the. Um, I just wanted to add in number 6 around the discussion of the VAA scheduling process. It says the group, uh, you know, uh, effort to redesign the appeal form, which includes a field for the petitioner to select the preferred hearing time window. And I just wanted to that it added that to break out the land um, in the improvements on the floor. And in the, and the oh, next wait, hold on. I, I didn't write these. So who's going to make this correction? For Am I going to have to make the correction? Oh. I mean, if Kathy were here, she probably could. Right. But normally she's here and listening. And she I listening. think we should assume Kathy is. Yeah, so I can send you that. This. That would be the one thing I think we should so add in. February 21st. Mm -hmm. Add in that. And then there's a, and then the third paragraph you know, says time. hearings are scheduled. And I think it should be parents will be scheduled because we didn't have the hearing scheduled. Okay. In that. So I'm fine with that. Okay. Those, those are the two changes that I have okay. to the March 21st. Good enough. Can you hand that to me? Yeah, let me send it because I had some other notes on here. This is sort of asked too, and I don't think it needs to say that. So you can work with it however you want. Just want to write exactly <laughs> what you do. Okay. So whatever you would say, what did you say to break out the land and improvements? That, so, you, that, 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 that whatever else changes we made to the to the. We did add three hearing windows, but we also did other things to the form, right? We we brought we we changed it. We made it so that they have to put down. They have to separate the land value and the house value, and they have to list both the assessment and the appraised value. It was helpful. It was, helpful to it was me. meant to be helpful. I thought it was helpful. I, I liked it. Helpful. And 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 right. added that they fill in both the assessed and appraised because that's what right. So whatever you want to say, those, okay. those are those are the two things. So that's number one. Do you want me to make a copy of it or can yeah? You can take it. Okay, so that's for February 21st. So do we have to vote on these changes? I think we just have to vote to yes. approve them with those changes, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, or we could make a motion for each one. We have to make a motion? No, let's just, we just approve. We'll just approve them. Anybody, all in favor of those minutes the way we just changed? As for February 21st. Yeah, yeah. move on. So before we move on, though, because I'm looking at the time. Yeah, we have to be we done have to it. Get here, right? Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, and, and you know, I'm, I'm there. There was seemed to be a lot of um, there. There were several, more than several mistakes uh, that were in there. Okay, just for instance, you know, it was like for number six, it mentioned that John Fallon um, was and he wasn't there, here. And he yeah. was not there, right. So, um, and then you know. There are a bunch of them. So all, all I'm saying is, I think we need to take time and go have have the have the minutes and the I don't know is, is Kathy someone that can be hired to uh, go through the hearings and or the deliberations and take the notes and you know re, just refine them, right? I, I mean, I, I can't take notes for life, so I don't, you know, I, it's, it's very difficult. So I don't feel like we need to prove them. At this meeting, we can wait until September to approve them, right? And make sure that they're, you know, accurate to what is was was discussed. I suppose we could. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, frankly, I don't care if we never approve them. I could care less, but yeah. that's just me. But we could wait till September. They are a list of facts, right? And they become the permanent record as much as we have a video. The minutes are what are permanently saved in the town clerk's office or the assessor's office. They are the permanent record of the decisions of who was who was there, of what the values were. And I just, you know, I went back. There were, you know, and the and they're supposed to record the votes. So there were some votes where, you know, I was listed as being in favor when I wasn't, or yes, yeah. and it wasn't. So I. I can do we it. Can wait. They can't. I'm happy to. We had a format when we had 650 of them. It was a mail merge and it just did list to the, you know, there was a system that used it really well. And I just can I help you? prefer that we wait on the meeting, make meeting. sure we get the clarity that yeah, we, seven yeah. Yeah. we have 10 minutes. Yeah. So what what are we what, what are we doing? So that's what I would just say that we, we can wait. We can wait until we can wait until September. September and but because, then what's going to happen? I'll have to call Kathy and see if she has any interest in doing this. Yeah, my recommendation. So she's going to have to listen to all everything all over yeah. again. Yep. Or by me, as long as it's not me. <laughs> well, or I'm just, happy to give him a shot when I have some. I think if this ever happens again, I'm just telling him he's paying for the secretary because we're not doing this again. It's not our job. We we that we have a budget. 
and we have a paid secretary. Yeah, so how come we didn't have to yeah, we didn't Carol have to, did a yeah, we, he got to save the money. Good for him. We and didn't, we didn't when we, get dinner. Exactly. So we didn't get should, dinner. He should get yeah. somebody. He should get somebody. You know what? Maybe he could. Maybe he could get somebody to come. Let me ask him then. Before we ask Kathy, I mean, we should ask Kathy first if she's interested. I know she's got a lot going on, so maybe she's not. If she's not interested, she I'll tell her to get somebody. Go hire somebody to listen to the men. Dollars. I mean, I would do it if I was remote. And I think I we should money. ask Kathy. Yeah, she might need the money. And she's very good at it too. She yeah. knows Anybody how we work. Use thousand dollars, and she's used to doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of money. You know, yeah. extra hours. She gets paid yeah. more than. Two I mean, hours. it was hard because I'm. Voting, I'm listening. It's hard when they're trying to be both. I've never done it before. I didn't right, get so that form until it was. Can we agree happening. that you didn't get the mail merge because the mail merge takes the form and throws it now off? Now I understand the mail merge. Yeah. yeah. So can we agree that we'll um we'll ask we'll um postpone voting on the minutes until September, and we'll ask we'll see if Kathy's willing to do it. And if not, I'll have to go to Ross and tell him you better hire somebody because we're not doing it. How's that? Have a budget for it. Yeah, it's there. Okay. So do we have to make a vote on So that? I guess we'll so we make a motion that we're gonna we're gonna postpone the um I think we don't have to make a motion to postpone approving the minutes. We don't have to go into the other piece of it about asking Kathy or anything like that. So I'm not sure what I'm doing for the minutes. Yes, we we're gonna let well, her listen to this one too. The other part is the hearing minutes were never posted for the town clerk. I asked Ross for a copy of them, so he sent them to me today. But you know, all the hearing minutes, those mm -hmm. were never even posted. So you can't go back to the hearing minutes to even verify who was there. Mm -hmm. So he scanned them all in. You know, the sheets we filled out, he sent me today a scan of the 38 sheets or whatever. So he at least has that document. And that's mm -hmm. probably pretty close. It says who was there, yeah. who wasn't there. You know, oh, who did she there. do all that last year too? I so believe she does all of it. I don't think we did any of it. Mail merged it in the assessor's office because he sent it. We're so good at it. Let's do it again. But they never, no, but it just never got put. Okay, so with Paula, with regard to the okay, I was planning on doing draft minutes for today, but since this whole thing is recorded, should, should we, should I scrap it or just, I'm almost done. Well, if you're almost done, go ahead. Okay, he needs the votes within 48 hours. That's what Apple wants. And something has to be posted within seven. Okay, so, so those are the two requirements that okay. we have, right? So where I, left off, where I left off with my notes is when we started deliberating on approving the minutes, um, started to talk about Ross's two changes. We should make those changes, yeah. And we approved. Yeah, that February 21st. Not sure if we approved that one. No, we approved, no, no. We approved your February minutes. Yeah, Kathy. comments. Yes. Yeah, yeah, my comments. But we didn't approve my previous discussion about changing those to Ross. We should approve those before we so go this way. Let's do that. Let's yeah. make we approve yeah. those two yeah. appeals that were personal that I incorrectly stated the assessed value. Yeah. So can we approve to use Ross's language? Yes, we can okay. approve okay. Ross's language okay. this time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I'll make those changes. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm voting no on that because you, you'll get it without me. Huh? You can make the change without me voting. Yes, is what I'm saying. So I'm voting. No, you're, I'm, you're voting. voting no. no. And here's why simply and put that I understand that he corrected a mistake, which was very nice. However, he is not part of the board. He doesn't get to read the minutes and correct them. That's our job. If we make a mistake, it's on us. He is not involved. He needs to be less involved and less and just not in our business. Okay. He is not a member of the board. I don't know how many times I have to say to make people understand. We do not work for him. Okay. And then the last thing is we voted. Uh, we're we're voting as a uh, group here to extend the the date to September. What? Well, um, when is that meeting? September. They're early September. I don't know the exact date. Oh, for the minute, the rest of it? No, for the for the, for the rest yeah, of the minutes, because it's going to be done during the motor vehicle appeal. Like we just took no, I mean, you can take no action and it sort There's of no dies. Action. It doesn't matter. Oh, we don't have to vote to, to we'll vote. take no, oh, take take no, 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 took no action, no action on the on approving the minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. in, in, in general, we have the, inst the you know the hearing minutes okay. aren't even close. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, and we did those at the we do them at the motor vehicle appeal meeting. That's what we'll do. We won't need a separate meeting. We'll just do it with that meeting. Yeah. 
and that okay. gives you know Kathy or somebody plenty of time to do okay. that. Yep. And then not part of the minutes, but are are you going to contact uh, Kathy? Yeah, I'll text her. I'll text her tonight. Okay. And then I'll let you know what she says, and then I'll go from there with Ross. Yeah, because because they're already posted, we we've already met our deadline for those three. I mean, so we yeah. have till September to make the yeah. Know, let her know this isn't like it doesn't need to get done. Yeah, it's still be done this summer. summer. Yep. It'd be nice to get them sooner rather than later while I'm breaking. Of so Whatever happens, it's true. She's doing minutes for a lot. I was going to say she, I've noticed that she's doing minutes for a lot of other boards. I don't know why we don't ask her when Kathy's not around. I, mean, I thought she, I didn't know that she Kathy's wasn't doing it anymore. So that's why. When, when she emailed me, mentioned Prue. So I asked her, were you going to be part of it? I, I was told she wasn't Prue doing anything. I didn't know who Prue was, but I, the name, I recollect her mentioning that person. Ours are probably the most, you know, that we have probably more detail in our minutes than any other board. Just because we, really? so well, we have so many numbers and we have, not yeah. zoning. I would say zoning has a lot. Zoning probably has a lot, yeah. But. We do. We have dollars and assessed, and it's, it's their techniques. I mean, she would make a lot of money. <laughs> That's how we got a picture. That's, That's why she does. Okay. Hey, I make motion that we adjourn. It is six uh, fifty-five or fifty-six. It's fifty-six. All in favor? I vote. Right. No. Aye. 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 There perhaps no property will be waterfront with the river and oh, far away. That's true. You can stop the reporting. I have a property in Trimble that just came on that has a, I wouldn't call it a river, but it's a river. That was not, that's a great price point. I didn't see it. 